Greetings everyone, Pranak here. I'm coming at you with a new video today. Now you might have noticed that video looks a little different. Maybe the quality is different. I just got myself a new camera. I'm kind of giving it a test run with this video, seeing how it goes. It's the Canon R800 video camera. Um, it's not a camera camera, it's a camcorder. So I'm going to see how this works. It came very highly on uh, YouTube. We'll see where it leads, right? But I'm digressing away from what I want to talk about today. Today I want to talk about safety, specifically carving safety. I am notoriously bad at keeping myself safe. I have to constantly remind myself, use a bench hook. And what is a bench hook? This is a bench hook. You can buy them pre-made. This one is a metal one from Speedball. Or you can make your own, such as this one, which I've made myself, and I even have a bigger one too. And today I want to make another one, and I'm going to show you how to make a bench hook so that way, you know, you can be safe. But let's describe, let's talk about what a bench hook really is. All right, so what exactly is a bench hook? A bench hook is meant to keep you safe. Basically, as you can see here, it's got two ends, one that points up, one that points down. Basically all you do is you put it right on the edge of your table right here. And that was something that fell. <laughs> and then you put your carving block right here. And you carve. And as you're carving, you move your block around in all your different directions and things like that. Now, you can go out and buy one, like I said, from Speedball here or you can make your own like me, like for this one. So I'm gonna make one that's go a little bit smaller than this. Um, actually, I'm gonna make it more in size with this one, because this one's about nine inches, this one's about 13. I want another nine inch one. I don't like using the speed ball one. All right, so in order to make one, we are going to need plywood, now this is quarter inch plywood I just got from Home Depot. This is a two by two section. It wasn't very expensive, about six or seven dollars. You will also need a square dowel, like so. This one is a half inch one. It's about, uh, was it 36 inches? Thir it says 36 by half inch, so yeah, 36 inches. And you will need wood glue like so. And if you want to do it and upgrade it a little bit, you want to use some of the, like this brand stuff, the contact brand, any of these anti-slip things. Uh, you don't want to try and get, you want to get the one that's more solid like this, it's a little easier to use, than the one that has the grid that has a bunch of holes in it. Because the glue will leak right through the holes and you don't want that. All right. Tool-wise, some of the things you're going to want, probably some kind of yardstick or a ruler of some kind, a tape measure. I like using these. These are spreaders. This is a, this is a Princeton Catalyst W6 or 06. I use this for spreading the glue. Um, they're very handy. You can just use a piece of cardboard too, like a chipboard type cardboard like you get from a cereal box or something. I have a workbench right here. I'm going to find very useful and handy to use. You will also want to have clamps as such, and you will need some kind of saw too to cut the wood. I've got a jigsaw here that I will be using to do so. Yeah, power. And another thing I found very handy is I have one of these right here. It's a clamp, and it works to just guide my saw along. First thing I need to do is decide how large I'm going to make it. Now, I'm going to do mine 10 inches. So I know it's going to be 10 inches long, and how wide do I want to make it? So I'm actually going to make this one, because this one from Speedball is 7 inches long. I'm going to make it 8 by 10. And 
because I want to save as much wood as I can, and I do use the, all this wood for mounting linoleum too. I'm just going to do eight here and eight here. Draw my mark. So I've gone ahead and I've clamped my board down on this side. The edge of my workbench is right around here. And then what I'm going to do is this is a guide, so I have to figure out a little tight right there. I have to figure out how wide I've got to make my guide. So basically I'm going to take my saw right here and line it right up with the edge of the right it line it right up in the middle of the line. And once I have that, I'm going to pull my saw away and I've butted this up against the edge of the guide of the side. Once I do that, well, this one's a little big. I know I got a ruler in here. I'm going to measure this distance right here. Or you could simply measure the edge right here. So one and a quarter. I am a klutz. So we're going to do one and a quarter right here. right there and make sure push this down this way so that way it clamps down and down here is where you tighten it up and you just push down on it now this is an item I got from uh, it's just a saw guide and I got this from Harbor Freight it was decently inexpensive My saw is not lined up properly, which I am not happy about. So that one and a quarter was not accurate. I need to move it a little bit more. Looks like another eighth of an inch, which is what I'm going to do. Hmm. I'm way off down there. Because I want this straight. All right, that looks accurate. So now I'm just going to use this and cut. And my blade isn't going to come anywhere near the edge of my, uh, what do you call it, the uh, workbench. was a little loud, yes, but necessary. And I'm not really worried about a real straight edge on here because it doesn't need to be. Um, I don't need this piece of wood. We can take this one off. So I've got everything cut down, or at least I got one side cut, and we're going to measure the other one now. So we're just going to do our 10 inches here. Remember, these are my measurements. You can do whatever size you decide you want to do. So 8 by 10 is the size I'm going to do. In fact, now that I think about it, I'm going to do a little bit bigger than 8 by 10. I'm going to do 8 by 11. Mostly because if I do it Let's do an 8 by 12, actually. Only because it's... I want something a little bit bigger, but nothing, but not too much bigger. Right there, so we're going to clamp this back down using my clamps here. 
We got the first line there, that's the one we want to use. Because it's such a small cut and I'm going to try and be very careful with it, I'm just going to... Oh, it's uh, crooked. My degree angle was off. It felt funny. I'm just going to try doing this. Nah, I am not. I don't want to risk it. Alright, I have this all wrong. So I've gone ahead and measured my other cut right here to get this one ready, and we're going to go ahead and cut this one off also. Now this next part is completely optional, but I've cut down my board, and I'm just going to take a little bit of sandpaper and kind of sand sides a little bit so I don't get splinters. Uh, it is something I would recommend you do, especially when you see how bad the cuts can get on one side. Not that it's really going to affect anything or harm anyone. That's just from the saw cutting it too though. Alright, now that we have that, we know that this you know, sanded those down. We know that this right here is going to be eight inches. Next we got to do is we're going to take our wooden dowel right here, our half inch wooden dowel. And we got to cut that down. Now I've got this little tiny hand saw that I got. It's a hobby grade, hobby, hobbyist saw, really small, fine teeth. You can use a regular saw to do this. Let's move it down here. Doesn't work so great, does it? Nope. So basically, this is a little miter box. And I know that I need eight inches. So I'm gonna measure out my eight inches here. Right here, and again, right here. Normally these little miter boxes, they have these little pegs that you put in here to hold this down tight against the edge. I do not have those. I don't know where they went. They went missing a long time ago. But we're just going to very quickly saw through this wood. Let's put something under here. That works well. and cut our eight inches for the top and the bottom because we need two of them. It doesn't take very long to do this, as you can see. If you really want to, you can actually use a little clamp here, which I could do. I'll just use one of these clamps. It's big, but it will hold it. It leaves me free to cut better and faster. not do so well. There we go. You can see that a little better there, can't you? There we go. Don't need that other piece. We just need these two right here. Okay. 
I'm going to use... I'm going to use two different ends here. And we need our wood glue. I had to go and find my wood glue. I set it down and then don't know where I put it. Anyways, we take our wood glue. We're going to apply a healthy bead of it right on to here. I'm going to do one side at a time. And we're going to wait for it to dry. So you just put it right on the edge. As you can see, just so it sticks there like so. And you'll want to use a clamp to hold it together. It will help it dry a little tighter and a little better. Make sure it's even on here as you do it. And that's one side, and then we're going to do the other side the same way here. And it's fine if you have to use a decent amount of glue so it oozes out the side. It doesn't harm anything to do so. And you want to get it as even as possible because it helps when you're carving. It doesn't have to be perfect, but should be good. Now, we are going to sit here and let this dry and we will come back to it in a few hours after it is the wood glue has all dried. All right, it's a couple hours later and for the most part, this thing is done. We'll take the clamps off. And as you can see, here's our basic bench hook. Fits right on the edge of my desk, like so which is a great thing. And it's done. And I can use it from either direction. It doesn't matter. Now, we can do a couple of things to improve this. First, we're going to do... And this is all optional, by the way. This is not something you have to do. So I know this is 8 inches. We're going to measure 4 inches here and also right here, right in the middle, just 4 inches. Now, one of the other things you can do to help this along is I also, now that I've done this, I am going to, let's say about three inches here. So an inch and a half on both sides. Put a mark here for that. Do that to this side too. And this is something that you're going to do, and it makes it a little easier. So, what I'm going to do now is very carefully, and because of this, I know I'm going to start it at the, make the marks along the bottom here, so I know where the bottom is. Here and here, I don't have to get it perfect, it doesn't need to be. And then what I want to do, I know that's two and a half, that's two and a half inches. I'm going to measure along the top here now. So I know it's two and a half. I'm going to make a mark at three inches and at five inches here. And just draw a diagonal of, it's basically a 45 degree angle right here. And we be very careful while I'm doing this. is saw this this way.
I'm going to do that to both sides. Now you could do this, you could do all this before. Oh boy, I'm cutting up the, uh, my thing right here. I should do that. Now that I've done that, I've cut right through, as you can see, both sides. Did a 45 degree angle, and I would do this, I will do this side also. That's two and a half, so let's measure to the three inch and five inch. And the closer you get to 45 degree angles, the tighter your fit will be. actually see me cutting this. I'm going to do it on the edge here. Right there. That way I'm less tempted to cut something else. Sometimes can be proven difficult. Now that I've made those cuts, you want to break these off. You could do this a couple of ways. I've got a chisel here. You can use part of your um, Maybe use one of your uh, wood cut tools or linoleum cut tools. But either way, I'm going to use this chisel. I'm going to be very careful about the chisel. And let's see here. I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this. It's no easy way, really. I'm going to do, actually, I'm just going to grab a hammer. And you can see this. Right here. I'm just going to lightly tap that. And I broke this piece off, as you can see right there. I'm going to do that with this side also. And this is a little improvement you can make. Now, why do I make this improvement? It's simple. So when you have a block, let's say like this, and you're carving, and you want to change it, doing this gives you a chance to put a 45 degree angle like this when you're carving, making it easier to carve. So it's a little improvement you can do. And sometimes a lot of the wooden ones that you will buy on the market already have something like this. And as you can tell, I mean, I've got a knot right here. It's not a big deal, really. And a, little, a few little chips and things like that on here. It's not really going to affect anything. And if you, it's done now, unless you want to do one more improvement. Next improvement we're going to do is this stuff, this contact stuff that I talked about. So basically what you're going to do is I'm going to take this like this. I got some right here and some extra contact that I have. And I'm just going to set my uh, Thing on the top or I can actually just 
measure it out the best I want can. And I know it's eight inches wide, so I'm going to go ahead and do seven and a quarter. And it depends on how well this mark, or seven and three quarters, sorry. Now you can either cut this with scissors or you can use an exacto. It's really hard to see black on black, isn't it, people? <laughs> I would highly recommend doing this to both sides. And the reason I'm doing seven in three quarters instead of a full eight is just to make it a little bit smaller than my board right here. And I would recommend doing this to both sides because this stuff acts as a grip. It will hold everything you have in place a little bit better on here. It's kind of like double duty. It's a little bit safer and it's just a little bit easier to use, which is why I'm going to recommend it to you. Doesn't have to be completely perfect. Right there. We'll cut this down to size. Right there, so it's a little bit smaller, it's about an eighth of an inch smaller all around. And you do want to do it on both sides, because if you do it on both sides, whatever you got on here is going to grip, and whatever you, this is gripping is also going to grip. <clears throat> We're going to do that simply by taking some more wood glue and just pouring some out on here. Then I'm going to take my spreader. And just kind of spread it around. See, I like these spreaders from Princeton. These uh, catalyst things. Uh, mostly because they're made of a silicone and they clean off really easy with water. With them being glue, it makes it really, really, really easy to do. And you just want a nice, decent coat on it. You don't need it super thick but you don't want it to be super thin either. And you're just going to set this on there like so. And what I would highly suggest you do is use some wax paper. Like so. And yes, I'm using wax paper and not parchment paper because it's something I don't care about, wax paper. I'm going to put that right on the edge here and stick that there. Now I'm going to measure out another piece here. And I'm just going to fast forward through this so you guys can see it. In case you are wondering, the reason I'm using wax paper is the glue won't stick to it. And I'm not worried about messing up wax paper because it's cheap to use. Uh, it's A lot of book binders use it for gluing and things like that. So, And putting it in between pages of glue so that glue doesn't stick together. But once we got all this done, we're just going to put a nice big heavy book on it. I'm going to use my big old courier knives here. 
and then we're going to let this dry. All right. So I have it sitting here drying. Then a few hours. And there we go. Our, or my, and yours, new bench hook. So we've improved it by a few ways other than just the basic. And what we put in the 45 degree angles, so that way you can twist your block to be 45 degrees. And then we put the grip on it too, that keeps it from sliding around. Because these things do slide. And if you find it easier if you actually put, like, I buy an entire roll of this stuff and I just lay it down on my uh, table and then I put this on top of it. I mean, this thing goes nowhere. It just sits. I mean, it's actually really good. So, it, you know, and with things not moving, you're not trying to hold your block and you accidentally jab yourself with a knife. So that is how you make a bench hook uh, pretty inexpensively. Uh, this one really only cost me, besides tools, material-wise, eh, $15? That's not that much, because uh, I believe this stuff cost me about eight, um, and then the glue cost like a dollar, and then, what was it, the uh, wood was only like another, mm, I think it was $6, so it was about 15 dollars ballpark but thanks everyone for tuning in just wanted to say thank you for watching if you have any questions please post them up down below i will definitely respond also give me a thumbs up give me a like on the videos uh that helps me out too remember you can always support me by going to my uh, etsy store and buying a print from me and also you can follow me on my uh tumblr my twitter and my Instagram. Until next time, everyone. See ya. Bye.